A charge to the graduating class can be a challenge. Um, they're meant to set a tone of responsibility for you. Indeed, the, the definition of the word charge, this definition, is to lay on a responsibility. They're supposed to be motivational as you leave graduation. Shouldn't be too long, shouldn't be too short. The ceremony's ahead of us, there's a lot of people. It can be a tricky thing to get right. In thinking about what I might say to you to try and capture that, I was think, looking back over some of the previous topics of charges I've used in the past. There are a lot that have to do with Lincoln and land-grant universities, always, always a classic topic. Um, time for you to give back to society that's invested in you, that's a, that's a solid theme. Um, the strength of your particular classes link in a chain of graduating classes here at CSU that flows unbroken directly from the pen of Abraham Lincoln. You, you can't get too much Lincoln in a, in a land-grant university. Graduates of the University of Oz, I was in a creative mood when I wrote that one. Um, what I would say to my own kids if they were graduating, <laughs> there are some things I'd add to that one. Um, but I have to admit that after three days of these ceremonies this weekend, my inspiration tank is a little on empty, and so I thought what I might do this evening is turn to the place where I usually find my greatest source of inspiration, and that's all of you. So, Mr. Pat McConathy is the chair of our Board of Governors. He's in his uh, final um, months as, as chair of the board. That's a position that is an extraordinary amount of hard work. It's largely a thankless task behind the scenes. Indeed, that's true for the entire Board of Governors. So I hope first you'll join me in thanking Pat and the entire board for their service. Well, mostly I do that because it, he really hates it, so. Um, but I'm gonna ask Pat to provide me with a name of one of you lucky individuals, and we'll spill the beans now. You can start thinking about what you would like your commencement address to be about. What do you think? Anybody out there awake? How about I don't know. Lauren Scott. Lauren Scott. Lauren Scott. Oh, come on. There we go. Right. Now, as I'm coming out your way, try not to think about the 7,000 or so odd people who are watching or how many thousand pixels per square inch the Jumbotron will show this on or even how mercilessly your class will ride you if you get this wrong and pick a bad topic. Um, I, and really, don't worry about it much, because the truth is, unless this goes tragically wrong, nobody will remember it except you and I. Um, <laughs> and, and perhaps Ann Gill, who, when I did this once before, sent me a note the next day describing it as a gutsy effort, um, <laughs> which I don't think was her highest compliment. So with that as background, what would you like the topic to be? Got to pick one. Come on, we've had four years of final exams. You can do this. This is. The importance of this day, twenty years down the line. Really? Of all the things you could pick, you're going to go with that. Well, so we could, we could approach the importance of, of this day 20 years down the road in different ways. We could talk about the importance of, of um, living each day, one day at a time. We could talk about the long-term perspective. We could talk about, we could approach it from the perspective of the history. That could take us back to Lincoln and land-grant universities. <laughs> um, 
probably whatever perspective we approached it from, if I spend enough time talking about it, we can make it controversial. Um, <laughs> and, and maybe in that lies where we ought to spend just, just a few moments. Maybe we can generalize from that, because it seems to me that controversy is one of the things that really is um, making a big impact on our society these days. It seems to me that whenever we turn on a television station or whatever the topic is, we can find people really fairly stridently arguing, trying to get your attention, trying to persuade you of a point of view. And, and I think that life actually probably gives us two types of choices. There are real choices and false choices. Now, now real choices, I would submit, are those things where you actually have to take a stand. And, and your education has pr prepared you for those. We've taught you how to critically evaluate. We've taught you how to, to make a decision, despite how long it took us to pick this topic. Um, we've taught you how to uh, ar articulate that and defend it. But I would submit that life sends us a lot more false choices, a lot more things where the rhetoric dial has been turned up so highly that the contrast on the issue makes it appear black and white and actually obscures the common ground that's there between the choices. And I, I hope that your education has prepared you for that. I hope that your education has prepared you to see a complex issue from all sides, to find that common ground, to build consensus. Now the trick, of course, will be for you to tell which of life's choices are real and which are false. And I have to admit that, that I would worry a little bit about your generation's communication in terms of its pace, which is instantaneous, and its brevity, which is 120 characters or less, or whatever that is. <laughs> and I think that may make it more challenging for you to, to really identify life's false choices. I hope that you will, will give yourselves and others the gift of thoughtfulness the gift of reflection, the, the gift of perspective. I, I hope you'll give yourself and others the luxury of changing your mind, perhaps even occasionally admitting that you were wrong. I, I think this is important because how your generation deals with false choices will go a long way to determining whether you'll be more successful than our generation has been in finding solutions to some of the difficult problems that we've left behind for you. So that's my, um, that's my hope for you. That's, I, I believe, I'm confident, that you can be better at this than we were. So that's my charge to you, members of the spring 2011 Colorado State University College of Liberal Arts graduating class. Be thoughtful. Be reflective. Avoid life's false choices. Find consensus, and in doing so, make your world a better place. Your university is extraordinarily proud of you. Congratulations.